Welcome to my lecture online. Now let's talk about the wedge. The wedge has some very practical purposes in mechanical engineering. And here's a what we call a typical example of how we deal with wedges. A wedge is an object that is used to split something open, like you put a wedge in a, a log, for example, to split the log, or you could put a wedge in somewhere to lift an object, like we do in this example. We also use the concept of a wedge when we talk about the screws, how you, when you tighten or loosen a screw, you push something up or down, and the concept there is exactly the same. We'll see some examples of that as well. So what's happening here is as we drive using a force, a wedge in between the object A and the object C, object A will go upwards. So we're trying to get an upward motion on A by driving in this wedge. The question is how much force is it required to lift up an object like object A? Well, when we draw some free body diagrams, we'll start with object A in itself. Object A has a weight equal to mg, and that weight is counterbalanced, of course, with the normal force on the bottom surface. We also have a friction force here. As we're driving this wedge in here, we push object A into the surface at D, there'll be a friction between D and A, and so as you're trying to push the object A upwards, there'll be a friction force pushing downward as well, which means the upward normal force at the bottom of A, which is caused by driving the wedge in here, has to both lift up A and counterbalance the friction force at surface D. We can also see that the force driving the wedge in here will cause a friction force to exist between B and A, which causes a force to act on A in the positive x direction. That's the friction force at A, which is the normal force at A, times mu. That will then cause a normal force to exist on the back surface here, called the normal force at D, which then causes the friction force over there. The greater this friction force, the greater the normal force here, the greater the friction force there. Notice the friction force at A is equal to the normal force at D. And eventually, or finally, you can say that if N sub A is large enough to overcome both the weight of object A and the friction force at D, if N sub A is greater than the weight and the friction force, the object will go upward. So that's the ultimate objective here, is to get A to go up to drive the wedge in there. If we look at the forces on the wedge here, notice we have N sub A also acting downward to the top surface of the wedge. We have the force trying to drive the wedge in, and we have a normal force at the surface B here. Notice the normal force is slanted, and we have an angle here relative to the horizontal. Typically those angles are fairly small. Notice there will also be a friction force at B against the wedge, and so there'll be a resultant force, which is the vector sum of these two forces, the normal force at B and the friction force at B. Also notice the magnitude of the friction force at A here is the same as the magnitude of the friction there, because these are forces sliding over one another. Eventually what we can now do is draw a diagram here of the forces acting on the wedge. We have the normal force acting downward, we have the resultant force at the bottom surface, which is the sum of these two forces right here. And then we have the net force driving the wedge in. The net force will be equal to the force here that's pushing against the wedge minus the friction force there, which is pushing back. So the net result of that is the net force driving the wedge in. Notice that the more force you apply, the greater N sub A can be. In other words, as you apply a greater amount of force, you can lift up a larger object up here. Also notice that the net force here, driving the wedge in, is typically much smaller than the force right here, the weight of the object and the friction force keeping it from sliding up. So that's why this is kind of like the mechanical advantage portion of this problem. A very small amount of force driving a wedge in can actually lift a very large object up. And that's why wedges are used in various circumstances. Notice that the friction force on the bottom surface is already taken into account in the resultant force R right there. And those are the basic concepts of what we call the wedge. The wedge is used to use a fairly small amount of force to create a large force pushing some large object. In this case, a relatively small f will cause a large weight here to be lifted up and just by driving the wedge in there. And that's how we're going to look at the concept of a wedge in some example problems coming up. And that's how it's done.